Well, I'd like to start off with something funny. A fourth grader celebrated his birthday on crutches so he couldn't carry the cupcakes into the Sunday school without help. So the teacher asked his sixth grade brother, Noah, to help carry them in. The brother said, well, I could, but I, I prefer not to. Spotting a teaching moment, the Sunday school teacher asked, what would Jesus do? And without thinking about it, no answer. Jesus would heal him so he can carry his own crutches. <laughs> his own cupcakes. All right. How many of y'all brought your Bibles? Lift them up real high and say this. Say, this is, this is my Bible. It is the Word of God. I am who it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. And I have what it says I have. I boldly declare that my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, and my cell phone is off. I will never be the same in Jesus' name. Turn to someone, look him straight in the eye and say, did you hear that, child of God? I will never, ever, ever be the same again. Well, God bless you. Open up your Bibles to the Gospel of Mark, chapter 9. And now, Father... I want to thank you for bringing all the people here, all those that are watching on Facebook Live, as well as those watching by television. Touch all of our hearts, open up our thinking so that we can reason out the scriptures, understand them, and apply them, and receive miracles in our lives. We thank you for this in Jesus' name, amen. Mark chapter 9, verse 17. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him into the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It, it's a, it has often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for the one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed. What did he exclaim, church? Say it, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And when Jesus saw a crowd running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said, he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand, lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. Time magazine had a recent issue on their front cover that sort of had a dual message about what we in the world have been facing on COVID-19. And the magazine has two words to it. It's open or nope. And when I saw this cover, I, I thought to myself, that's an example of belief and doubt at the same time. You see this? Open. We're open. America's open for business. It's time to get started. It's time to move past this COVID. But then there are those, nope, we can't. We're not ready. It's too deadly, too, too, too serious. And I look at that magazine and I think of this. You can look at life one of two ways. You can say, nope, I can't make it. I'll never overcome. I'll never get out of debt. I'll never get well again. My marriage will never get restored. My children will never get their lives straightened out. I'll never have enough money. I'll never find the love of my life. Nope, I can't. Or you can... Be the person that says, open, I can. All the promises of God are yes and amen. God has promised to heal me and I shall recover. God's going to bless my life financially and I will have an abundance. 
My children all shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of my children. My children are coming back to the Lord Jesus. And all things, what God's joined together, let man not put asunder. And my spouse is not going to put this marriage asunder. This marriage is going to get healed. I thank you, Father God. I say yes. And this father was quite discouraged. His, his son was like this for, for all of his life. And then the one time he had hope, he brought him to Jesus' disciples, and they were not able to help him. And some of you kind of relate to this, this boy's father. You've been prayed for by some of the best ministers, and you still haven't got well. You've been through marriage counseling until you bankrupt yourself almost, seeing enough counselors, nothing's happening. You put your kids in rehab only for them to come right back to drugs again. You prayed and pleaded with God to take this nasty habit from you, but you keep going right back to it again. You've struggled with depression. You've taken medicine. That hasn't worked. That hasn't worked. And you're wondering, is my life ever going to get better? Am I ever going to see good days? And I'm here to tell you, you have a choice today. You can say open or nope. You can say God is able. All things are possible to the one who believes. And this is what the boy's father said. He said three words. I do believe. Can you say that with me today? I do believe. Can that incurable disease be healed? I do believe. Can you get out of debt? I do believe. Can you make the dream God put in your heart come true? I do believe. Can you break that nasty habit, that addiction? I do believe. Can God restore your marriage? I do believe. Can you find the love of your life? I don't believe. Some of you are like, I'm, I, that one I don't want, anyone. I'm, I'm ha God bless you for some, not all the things that people want, you want necessarily. But now here's the point, is we have to believe. And what I, what I find so beautiful and encouraging about this story is this man believes in his heart, though he has a lot of doubt in his mind. I got news for you. Doubt in your mind will not stop the faith that's in your heart. I know sometimes we think, well, you know, I had some doubt. I wasn't sure. Listen, I've been there so many times. But yet when I've just decided, you know, you know how I have these fears. You know I have these doubts, Lord. But I'm going to trust you and act the way you want me to act. Act in faith. You know what I find? God meets me. I know when, when COVID just got started in, in America, our church shut down in, in March like pretty much everyone shut down. Businesses shut down. It was like a ghost town. It was just something, you know, we'd never seen before. And I remember when it happened, and we're ready to shut down our services. I wrote to the two networks, NBC and CBS, and told them, we're going to go ahead and have our last TV show in Easter. I said, we're going to go ahead and run it through Easter, but I'm giving you our notice that we're going to temporarily postpone it because of COVID. And my thought was we weren't going to have enough money for it. Because, you know, people weren't going to be in church, and they're not being in church. They're not going to give. Oh, some will give, but for the large number, they wouldn't give. That's what I thought. Well, both networks, they wrote to me, Bishop, you, you can't stop. In fact, more than ever, more people will be watching your show because you'll be the only local religious broadcast, I, other than the Catholic Church. I think the Catholic had a broadcast, but you'll be the only one. People will listen to you because they're staying home. They're, they have no church. You will be their church. You can't do this to them. Please think about it. So I thought about it. And so I, I mean, here, these two people, two networks telling me stay on. So I, I took it in prayer. I said, Lord, you know, COVID's here, right? I had doubt that we would have money. I, I'm trying to be wise. I don't want us to go bigger. I don't want us to fire employees. I want us to be able to do what we can. So let's cut off things. Besides, what's the point of having TV? No one can come to church through it. You understand? So I'm thinking, what's the point of advertisement? I don't get it. And the Lord began to deal with me. I'll just give you the conversation he and I had. 
Basically, he's asking me one question. Do you not believe I can meet your needs during this time? Well, Lord, all things are possible with you. But do you believe? And I began to feel convicted that I was allowing my doubt to rule me. And I said, Lord, I believe you can, and I believe you will. The next morning, I wrote to the networks and said, I'll tell you what, we're going to stay on. But pray for us. Because if we ever get low and th money doesn't come in, we're dropping it. No, 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 we're, we're, we're going to all pray for you. I'll make them all religious. They all want their, their cut, right? Everyone gets religious at that moment, you know. And so I said, all right, we'll stay on. I looked at the offering. We had no service. Six weeks, nobody was in the service except the band and me and the, and, the, and the TV people. That was it. I looked at the offer. I said, well, it looks good. The next week, it looks good. Next week, it still looks good. I'm thinking, what's going on here? You said, Bishop, you're doubting. I'm doubting in my head, but believing in my heart. You know how I know I believed in my heart? Because I stayed on TV. Faith without action is dead. So the action of staying on was proof I believed. Do you see this? Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a grain of mustard seed, you can move this mountain. I like when he said small. He's not telling you you have to have this overwhelming belief where you know that you know it's going to happen. But rather, I believe it will happen. But help me, Lord, with my unbelief. Did he not say that I have unbelief? Where was it? It wasn't in his heart. It was in his head. You know why? Because he still was there with his boy. His apostles, Jesus' apostles couldn't help him, but he stayed there and said, next, Jesus, could you help me? The fact that he's asking for help is proof that he still believed. Do you see this? And this is an encouraging message to some of you because you look at your marriage and you think, I've been through counselor after counselor and we have no love, and you think it will never happen. But I'm here to say, stick with it. Don't give up. That's the only thing. If we quit, see, if I quit, I really believe this. Only God knows, but I believe if I would have quit that and quit the TV, then the money would have shrunk because God would say, that's what you believed. And, if that's, and I would have been so proud. See, I was wise. I was wise in cutting it, because look at the money, I, just like I thought. How many of you are so proud? I told you I got the cancer. So proud, I was right. I diagnosed myself. See, you, you get whatever you believe. And I believe God honored my action of faith to help the apostle community, to give them a religious broadcast, a church service, on Sunday morning, when I knew no one, Catholics, Protestants, no one was going anywhere, but they all can go to CBS and NBC and watch an encouraging word. And we bless the community by that. We bless the community by expanding, by opening up the feeding program. We never had a major, we've always fed the hungry, but never in this capacity. But when the needs became great and people were unemployed, the idea came to me by Pastor Julian Mike. They said, can we start a feeding program? I said, absolutely, let's do it. Let's help the people. I'm not thinking anymore. See, I'm thinking, the money came in, we're paying all of our bills. How many of y'all kind of get excited? Well, I'm paying all my bills. God's coming through. <laughs> and, and you say, well, that's still faith, but I'm still excited, and somewhat, I know there was some doubt and apprehension in my mind, but it did not overtake my action. So when I said, let's, let's feed people. That means we have to spend more money. That's cool. Let's spend more money. Let's do it. See, this is what we began to do. And just recently, Jeremiah came up with an idea, can we give Bibles out to the immigrants on our border? We have some connections from our church that can get the Bibles. How many of y'all know God gives you those connections for a reason? Use it. I said, absolutely. Let's buy some Bibles. I said, this was by 500. Let's get it started with 500. Let's give these Bibles to them. I'm not thinking of not spending. I'm thinking of blessing. This is what happens when you start off in faith. And God begins to give you increase. 
begins to heal you, begins to bless you. But you can't give up. So we understand why it's easy at this point to get discouraged. What a terrible year, not just America, but the world has had, and some in the world is still having it. But in America, we're blessed. We're one of the few nations on the earth now, probably less than a handful, where we're reaching herd immunity very shortly. We're getting there. Some have already gotten there, but we're so close to it. And we ought to be looking back and think we survived, we made it. But, but I know some of you, you've had some very difficult moments. A loved one passed away. I know I've been through that. My mom passed away, not with COVID, but with something else. Maybe you have lingering effects of COVID, or you have an illness, cancer, heart disease. Maybe you lost your job. And even though I encourage you to get back, that job was a very good job you lost. Maybe you have a child that is full of demons you're praying for. You maybe have a disastrous marriage. I'm here to declare to you what Jesus declared on his opening sermon. Do you know what his opening sermon was? He opened up the scroll to the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, verse 2. And here's his words. I'm here to, pro the Spirit of the Lord is on me to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. Can you all say, this is the year of the Lord's favor. And when he says year, I don't believe 365 days. I believe by declaring year, he's saying this is the new year. And the rest of your life will be the new year of favor. And even in COVID time, we saw the favor of God. Yes, we, a lot of our members still haven't returned back. But the money has been bigger now. In fact, I'm here to tell you, this, when we had our board meeting, our annual, well, we have board meetings quite often, but we have the big annual one where we look and set the budget and all that. And we had the largest financial growth in over 20, annual financial growth in over 20 years. Our church is bringing in, yeah, give the Lord a praise offering. And we have more money coming in to our ministry than we have ever had in any year. That has to be God. How could that happen during the worst year? And I thought, the worst year, we have the biggest financial increase? You, where's the connection? It doesn't seem to match. And I'm ready to tell you, God's about to do something great in your life. If you will be like me, maybe with a lot of doubts in your mind, how am I going to get through? How am my marriage going to get healed? How's my children going to come back to the Lord? How, how am I going to, you know, and you have all these, how am I? How's it going to happen? I'm here to tell you, just say, I do believe. That's all. I do believe. Those three words will bring a miracle in your life. Now, when you say, I do believe, then act like you do believe. If you do believe God's going to bring you financial miracles, then when we receive the offering, you will act like he's going to bring you financial miracles. You don't step back and say, no, no, don't give that check. Besides, it's not the first of the month yet. Well, we get paid Monday or Tuesday. Well, not yet. But the church doesn't cash until Wednesday. Not yet. See, there you're making all the excuses. No, what you do is you act in faith anyway. And this is what we're called to do, is act in faith. Here's a beautiful passage. You ready for a prophetic word? Psalm 65, verse 11. You crown the year with your bounty, and your carts overflow with abundance. Say out, with, say out loud, God crowns the year with his bounty, and my carts, everything I have, overflows in abundance. This is what God's word says. So believe that the best part of your life is still ahead of you, Amen. not behind you. Yes. Again, like the father, you may still struggle with doubts. But doubt in the head will not reverse the faith that's in your heart. I think of Paul Sutcher. He needed a kidney, and he prayed for one. 
His relatives checked out their blood. It wasn't the right blood type, or if it was, there were some oddities that he could not get a kidney transplant. He was getting progressively worse, but he's believing God for a kidney transplant. One day he gets a knock on the door. A salesman selling vacuum cleaners was there named Jaime. And Paul said, you know, I'd appreciate it. I would probably buy some, but right now I'm very ill. I, I need a kidney transplant, and I'm just trusting, praying to God that someone will be a match. So right now I can't buy that. And, and he went on, to, and they got to talking a little bit, and Paul says, you know, I'm old positive, and my relatives didn't match my blood. Jaime looked and said, you know, interesting, I'm old positive. And Paul got excited. Would you think of being a kidney transfer? I mean, kidney um, transplant? Uh, give it to me, a donor? Well, Jaime wasn't ready for that. He said, well, well, I just was mentioning it. But I'll think about it. He went to, back to his car, put the vacuum cleaner back, and as he sat there, he felt the Holy Spirit telling him, do it. He got out of the car, knocked on the door, and said, you know, Paul, go ahead and check, check it to see if we're, we're a match. And if we're a match, I'll do it. Sure enough, he was a match. And Paul received a miracle. Who would ever expect a miracle would come through a vacuum cleaner salesperson? God has strange ways. The miracle, guess where I found my wife? Not at a nightclub. Not at a bar. Not at the women's club. Not at school. I found her going to the nursing home. How many of y'all know that wasn't what I thought was going to happen? That I'm going to find my wife at a nursing home. If I was thinking that, something's wrong with my thinking. <laughs> How old do you want her? You really have a grandma thing going, don't you? <laughs> no. But see, just doing God's will, and there I met Sonia for the first time at a nursing home. What I'm trying to tell you is God has some wonderful ways to bring you your healing, a miracle, restoring your marriage, turning your children around. Who knows what person can contact your child and turn your child around? What can happen in your life that financially, one moment, just one touch of favor can bring you financial abundance? Speaking of financial abundance, there's a lady named Stephanie. She was at church, and she was listening to the pastor teach on giving. And she got really touched by it. And, and, and back basically the pastor says, start where you're at. But if God should ever, and this is what the pastor said, if the God should ever give you $2 million, would you be willing to give $2 million? I'm not saying to give $2 million, only if you got it. Would you be willing, if God, if God gave you the $2 million, would you give it? And Stephanie got excited. She raised her hand and stood up, and he prayed for all the people who would be willing to give $2 million if they got it. Well, I think you know where the story is headed. A few weeks later... Her best friend, Jessica, just got money from a major lawsuit that she was involved. And the money had come in, and Jessica said, you know, you're my best friend. I have millions of dollars. I don't need it all. I just want to bless you. For some reason, the Lord's put it in my heart to give you $2 million. What would you do? Wait a minute, Lord. I, I don't think the pastor prayed specifically for me. No, without hesitation, Stephanie said. You are watching The Bondage Breaker with Bishop Tom Brown. Bishop Brown's ministry of spiritual deliverance is well known in America and around the world. His message of freedom and victory in Christ is found in his best-selling books. Come by his church for an autographed copy. Word of Life Church has an excellent children's ministry with the benefits of small classrooms so children can have more individual attention. Children will have fun in one of the largest indoor playgrounds in the city. Our youth ministry is on fire with teenagers that are truly committed to Christ. Worship the Lord with the inspirational music of our church band, which has some of the most talented musicians and singers in our city. Enjoy a latte or fresh pastry in our beautiful coffee shop while you make new friends. Relax or play games in our church's new Cloud Nine Park but it's open to the members of the church after Sunday's services. Word of Life Church cares about people's needs. We provide food, clothing, and aid to the needy. Visit us at Word of Life Church and make a positive difference, not only in your life, but the lives of others.
Word of Life Church meets every Sunday at 9 and 11 a.m. and 1.30 p.m. for Spanish. Bible study is on Wednesday at 7.15 p.m. The church meets at 11675 Pratt Avenue. That's near the intersection of Pebble Hills and Sao Kleinfeld across from Walmart. For more information about this spirit-filled church, call 855-9673. That's 855-WORD.